Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, this, uh, today I decided to pop another gun out of the safe and just uh, give some thoughts and impressions about it, just talk about it a little bit. This is the Scorpion Evo S1, this is the semi-automatic variant of the Scorpion Evo subgun or you know, pistol caliber carbine, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just, I'm going to give you a brief history of this specific gun that I have, not the Scorpion in general. I mean, there's other videos you can watch for that, but anyway. This is a uh, 2013 variant of this gun. This was actually one of the first that were imported into the U.S. And I acquired it sometime, I believe, in late 2014. Um, around there or so. So I've had it for, you know, I guess pretty close to 70 years now. And I'll just be honest with you. When I first got this gun, I, I didn't really care for it too much. Uh, I kind of got sold by the hype about this thing because it was, at least at that time, one of the first affordable pistol caliber carbines that you could get on the market and I was never really a huge fan of pistol caliber carbines back then I was more of a rifle person myself but I decided to get this thing just to add it to the collection because a lot of people had a lot of good things to say about it so I gave it a shot long story short out of the box this gun sucks it absolutely sucks balls and there are quite a few updates that or upgrades that I would highly suggest doing to this gun if you were considering purchasing one to make it far more functional and just pleasant overall and i'm going to talk about some of the things that i've done to this gun and just kind of give my overall impressions of it after the updates anyway uh pre-update of course this is uh, uh and i did mention this but this is a registered sbr so alphabet boys and girls no worries there it is legal anyway uh, out of the box, this gun does not come with a stock or a brace. Uh, there are some models that you can buy from certain vendors that come with braces, but it doesn't. Or this one didn't. So, originally I had an SB Tactical side folding brace. It was okay. Uh, and I guess when it comes to braces, it might be the best available option out there. However, I'm about six feet tall. I have really long, lanky arms. And I require, you know... A, you know, slightly longer length of pull than what that SP Tactical Brace offered. So I actually ran that brace for a few years. It worked. Uh, it just wasn't really that pleasant. And I'll talk about why, but specifically, you know, it, it folds to the side. It actually folds to the right side for what it's worth. So when you close it, it folds on this side, which is a good thing about it. But it's... This is a Zukov, by the way. This is a Zukov folding stock, which is a fantastic stock. I'll go into detail in, uh, in a minute about, about it. But the uh, SB Tactical Brace is fine. A lot of people love it. But if you decide to keep this thing as a pistol, it's probably the best option that you might have available for the Scorpions. But I just didn't care for it, especially over time. I, I, I didn't care for it. It just wasn't that great. So I decided to SBR this thing. But let me just talk about what we've done here from front to back. So uh, this is one of the older variants that were brought into the country. It does not have the half by 28 muzzle threading. Uh, it has, I think it's 18 by one, I believe 18 by one or something like that. But it does come with this uh, nice little flash hider on the front. Uh, it, it's fine, I guess. But uh, the factory handguard that it comes with. If you've seen the stock photos of what the Scorpion Evo looks like, it's like this, this weird, clunky quad rail. Like this plastic or polymer kind of sucks, uh, especially because it has this slant right here or so. So the front sight is actually like way back here instead of, you know, naturally up front like this handguard. <laughs> but yeah, that, that factory quad rail kind of sucks. Uh, it's not that comfortable either. So we replaced it with the Pasquet Sapper handguard. This is uh, an HBI Industries handguard, which shout out to HBI Industries. They make a lot of excellent, excellent, fantastic aftermarket parts for CZ products in general, or you know, a few other guns for that matter too. But uh, they're a great resource to go to for Scorpion parts. Um, but yeah, we have the Pasquet Sapper handguard. This is the OD Green variant of the handguard. And uh, we have some NC Star Vism uh, panels here. These, this is an M lock handguard, by the way. I know I've got all my slots covered, but it is an M lock handguard. And that is a good feature about this thing over the stock handguard because, of course, it has the cheese graters on the, uh, the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock positions. So 
this thing is a little slimmer it's a lot more comfortable and with the forward uh or forward with the vertical uh foregrip that we have right here i have a nice comfortable grip that i can apply to this thing and i can just slide my thumb over and activate this uh, enforced wml weapon light this is the short model the 400 lumen variant uh, this is a pretty apt weapon light for this particular gun for this setup have it over here since i'm a lefty and uh, we have the strike industries charging handle right here uh, the factory charging handle that comes on this gun is rather short it's curved this one is slightly longer it's more of a straight design and uh, it's got some texturing on the front and it, it's not huge like some of the other options out there it's a little more understated i guess you would say it's polymer as well it's also very cheap it's like i got this one for about 15 bucks uh, but it is definitely an upgrade over the factory handguard or factory charging handle I should say uh, Cool thing about the Scorpion Evo. It does have a last round bolt hold open, which I'll talk about more in detail in a moment, but this is uh, just a Fairly generic. This is uh, what is this? Uh, UTG QD socket Which uh, that is a huge downside of the factory handguard. It has absolutely no uh, sling attachment points on the handguard itself and speaking of that the only sling attachment points on this gun are right here right here <laughs> these little bitty uh, hook holes and uh, you have them mirrored on the other side right there and right there where the thumbs are so yeah the sling attachment points for this gun from the factory are absolutely awful it severely limits your sling choices and sling options so that's why i've done so much to this thing because i mean if you actually want to run a sling on this gun and make it a usual a usable uh weapon for various situations addressing the shortcomings of the sling mounting are i mean that, that's kind of a big deal if you ask me so Definitely something to consider if you get one of these guns. So last round bolt hold open. It does have a bolt catch. Of course, you can drop it right here and that will drop the bolt. It, it, it functions as a bolt catch as well. So just push it up when you pull the charging handle back and it'll lock it to the rear. Uh, anyway, um, moving back a little more, we have the, uh, or we'll just talk about the sights. These are just Magpul and bus flip up sights. The factory sights are actually metal sights. They're right here. They're low profile design. Uh, they're actually pretty decent sights, which the aperture specifically has one, two, three. I believe that's, yeah, it's got uh, four positions. So uh, yeah, let, me, let me count that and make sure I'm right. Yeah, it's uh, four different apertures. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So it's got four different sized apertures. That's the biggest hole. That's the next biggest. That's the next smallest. And that is the smallest aperture size. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Four position aperture in the rear sight. And it is the rear. This is the rear sight, by the way. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. It is uh, windage adjustable. And the front sight right here is elevation adjustable and uses the AR style. Uh, side adjustment tools to adjust and again it is a metal uh, they are pretty decent sights but they are low mounted sights so i am running magpul inbus sights because uh we'll talk about why a little more in detail in a moment because it has a lot to do with my stock setup and this riser that i'm running long story short we have a lower than one-third co-witness with this hollow sun hs515 here and these sights are more apt because again i'm running a taller optic so you can't use these low mount sights because they're useless with this optic and this cheek riser because you couldn't get a sight picture uh, because the riser. The reason why we're running the riser on the other hand is uh, because the optic. And the reason why I chose to run a higher mounted optic as opposed to something mounted lower and closer to the receiver is several reasons actually. So with this uh, riser, of course it gives a solid cheek weld and it is almost at it's almost in line with the, uh, the receiver so running something this high uh it, it kind of helps with recoil a little bit or perceived recoil i should say because again kind of like what, what i was talking about in my pat video the stock is going to sit in your shoulder pocket but you're going to be looking through the sight and you're going to have your face right here on this uh, cheek riser 
And with this riser, it provides a solid, consistent, uh, repeatable cheek weld. Gives you a third point of contact right here. And it's a solid point of contact as well. The stock is gonna sit maybe slightly lower in your shoulder pocket because of the optic being so high, but it's gonna provide a really solid, really tight, um, I guess you could say a really solid, really tight shooting package in your shoulder, uh, coupled with the foregrip and the, uh, the, the gripping options that you have up front. It just makes it really easy to drive the rifle, really easy to control. And speaking of controllability, since this is a direct blowback design, it you know it has more recoil if you've never shot one of these things it's got a little more recoil than what you would probably expect considering it's a nine millimeter it is a pretty punchy gun not to say it recoils a lot but it is punchier than you might expect it's actually punchier than a 5.56 ar um, so just something to be aware of but not uncontrollable by any means not uncomfortable by any means but it is a little punchy so your reticle, your red dot, your sights or whatever, they'll bounce around a little bit when you're shooting. But with this high optic, high cheek weld, it actually makes it far more pleasant to shoot since the recoil moves a little more straight back. It's more in line since your muzzle is way, or actually, yeah, we'll talk about that. So your muzzle is behind the light, but it's right here. So it's in line right here with I guess you could say in line at this point right here, the top part of the stock. And yeah, it, it just, it provides a lot more pleasant shooting experience. Uh, so it's, God, I can't articulate myself today. It's a very solid setup. It works great. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Anyway, I feel fucking retarded. I can't even complete a complete sentence right now. Anyway, let's move on. So yeah, uh, we've also changed out the safeties here. I forget which brand safety this is. It's I don't know, I bought it years ago. I don't know if it's HPI. It's like, it might be another brand, but these are not the stock safeties. These are shorter truncated safeties with a shorter throw, as you can see. Stock safeties are a bit longer. They have like this weird ass hook at the end of it. So they stick out to about like here when you engage it. So it actually rubs on your trigger finger and I'm a lefty, so that's why I'm holding it like this. But for you righties, it would look something like this, and then the safety would be digging into your knuckle right here. So one of the first things you wanna do when you get a Scorpion Evo is definitely swap out those fucking safeties because the factory safeties suck. I really don't know why CZ doesn't address those with an updated variant of this gun, but yeah, they suck. So definitely consider swapping those out day one when you get one of these. Trigger, on the other hand, gun is clear, by the way. As you can see, totally empty, okay? Trigger, by the way, factory trigger also sucks, but this is an HBI, I believe this is the Delta trigger, not the Theta, but the Delta, I believe. Might have it backwards, but who cares? Anyway, uh, yeah, so with this one, it's a straight trigger. It is a metal trigger. The factory trigger is actually a polymer plastic trigger. Uh, it's really heavy, it's like eight to 10 pounds. This one is probably more like six, uh, but we also have a reduced uh, power spring kit inside the trigger, so. Let me just show you what it looks like. So anyway, straight trigger, has a little bit of creep. You hit kind of like this wall. It's a little stagey, it's not that smooth, but you hit this wall about there or so, and then if you pull through it, it breaks. Not a ton of travel, so it's not bad by any means, especially after you perform this upgrade. The reset looks about like so. Not terribly long, uh, but not terribly short. It's very audible and tactile, but it's a little gritty. Again, not the greatest trigger in the world, but with these upgrades, again, with the HBI trigger and the reduced uh, power spring kit, it's, it's very functional. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like night and day versus stock. Uh, we also have a Strike Industries enhanced uh, magazine release. Uh, this is an ambidextrous ambidextrous magazine release it actually has these cute little tabs right here so you can push it down with your finger to release it you can actually push the actual meat of the tab right there to release it or you can just strip it using the uh this extended lip right here which is what i prefer to do just grab it like that and then you know it's very easy it's ambidextrous so it, it works great Nothing wrong with the factory magazine release, but I just like this one better. 
also it's a very inexpensive upgrade one great thing about the scorpion guns uh, if you weren't already aware uh, aftermarket upgrades and improvements for these guns are very very inexpensive they are very inexpensive so like this trigger for example I believe is about 40 50 bucks from HBI Industries the spring kit is like under 10 it's like seven eight nine dollars something like that uh, so you can completely revamp the trigger for you know about 60 bucks or so and uh, the safeties uh, there are more aftermarket safety options than this one but uh, the safeties also a very affordable upgrade uh, this is the Magpul pistol, pistol grip this is the Mo for the Evo cute uh, this has been painted OD green by yours truly so this is a spray paint job I didn't you know buy it like this because they only come in black uh, but the Walmart paint that I chose uh, <laughs> actually color matched this handguard pretty well which this handguard did come OD green I did not paint that but yeah the uh, pistol grip is also a very nice up upgrade for this gun the factory pistol grip has more of a swept back angle it's also not the most comfortable grip in the world uh, this one especially if you decide to run this as a pistol or SBR just far more appropriate for this gun uh, especially with the shorter length of pull uh, if you're going to be bracing it uh, when you extend that length of pull not so bad but it, it this this pistol grip is definitely an upgrade versus the stock one I will definitely say that this is the Magpul Zukov stock with the Reptilia adapter uh, this is a huge upgrade for this gun and I'll just say why primarily because it offers sling mounting options here in the back this is a QD sling socket it is on both sides that's a huge deal for this gun because with the CZ factory stock for example uh, it doesn't have QD sockets back here it doesn't really have any sling mounting options on it I don't believe so uh, with that said if you have the option of getting a stock for this gun like if you decide to SBR it or whatever definitely consider getting the Zukov over the factory CZ stock I know the purists will say you know stick with the factory stock but this one is actually more functional uh, it has QD sling mounting points so to me that's kind of a big deal uh, because that is one of the major drawbacks about this gun in its factory configuration is the sling mounting options on it are trash absolute trash so if you actually do plan on running a two-point sling you gotta address it somehow and this is how I chose to do mine put one up here and then of course with the Zukov you have one back here so running a two-point sling on this thing is a piece of cake and it's actually pretty comfortable so uh, we have the Holosun HS515C. This is a QD uh, optic. It's, this is the circle dot model, so it has like the EOTech style reticle. Works great with this setup, especially for CQB style engagements, which is what you know a sub gun is intended for. Uh, it does lower one third co witness with the sights, as you can probably deduce here. And of course, it is solar powered or has a solar backup. Uh, cool thing. I love hollow sun optics they're actually very 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 great options for the money and uh, let's talk about mags a little bit so when I first got this gun this is a 2013 variant again had it for almost seven years now it came with these uh, smoke colored polymer mags these mags are fine they do tend to work however they actually over time end up cracking around the feed lips which you can see this one has already started doing so about right there where the tip of my finger is uh, yeah camera's kind of focused on it pretty well right now so yeah right there is actually a small crack in the polymer it has not broken off uh, I don't really see any movement like I'm pushing it with my fingers so this magazine actually functions fine but that is just something to be aware of if you get these older polymer or yeah these smoke mags or whatever they do tend to crack at the feed lips something to be aware of uh, I don't even know if they make these anymore but I've got a bunch of these and you know they work but most of the uh, the uh, <laughs> the non smoke or see-through mags like this Magpul mag right here far superior uh, the Magpul mags are also very affordable I believe they're about 15 to 20 bucks depending on where you look and they hold 35 rounds versus 30 for these so these are probably a better option they're also also damn also also geez Fred. yeah they <laughs> there's also um, other good aftermarket mag options such as the manicore arms mags uh, PGS hybrids those are pretty decent um, 
what else is out there? ETS makes some okay mags, I guess. I would just say, you know, don't overthink it. Just grab these. These are pretty much the best ones for the money, at least in my opinion. No, no need to really, you know, go crazy. <laughs> just get these and be done with it. Which, that's the cool thing about the Magpul mags is they're affordable, they're everywhere, they're easy to find. They hold 35 rounds and they have witness holes. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, so, Pasque Sapper handguard up front. Big, big upgrade over the stock handguard. I would highly suggest looking into these. They're also very affordable. Only $49 from HBI Industries. Night and day transformation on the front end of the gun. Um, definitely something to consider. So, what do I think about this gun overall since I've been blabbing about it for almost 20 minutes or a little over 20 minutes now? <sighs> Honestly, again, factory out of the box. It has some serious shortcomings uh, that definitely need to be addressed. Honestly, before you even take this thing to the range for the first time, I would highly suggest swapping out the safety. Maybe look into the trigger. Uh, if I mean... It's not a necessity with the trigger, but it is highly, highly, highly recommended to swap this thing out. Or at the bare minimum, install the uh, the HBI spring kit. It's less than 10 bucks, and it, like, damn near halves the trigger weight. So, big deal there, I would say. Brace options. That, you know, you can go a bunch of different directions with it. I mean, you could get fancy and maybe throw an AR-style buffer tube on there and run an SBA-4 or SBA-3. Or you could stick with the side folding options like the SP Tactical Folder. Um, but at the end of the day, nothing beats a stock. And in my humble opinion, I would say the Zukov stock is probably the best option that you can find for these guns. Unless you want to throw like an ACR stock on it or something. <laughs> I don't even know if they make adapters for this thing for like the Bren 2 stocks. But that would be pretty cool if they did. But other than that, until they do something like that, the Zukov stock for the money is probably the best thing that you can get. Uh, because, again, addressing the sling mounting options on this thing is kind of a big deal if you ever plan on actually using it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, geez, what else can I say about this thing? Uh, it's been reliable, <laughs> you know. Uh, I run mostly hollow points through here. These are some 124 grain hollow points that I have loaded in here. And it has no problems running them. Uh, obviously no issues running full metal jackets. I pretty much run exclusively like 115, 124 grain stuff through here. I have actually never run the, hunt, the heavier 147 grain stuff. But from what I hear from other owners, you know, no issues. No issues whatsoever running that stuff. But uh, I've actually found this gun to be quite accurate, especially with the 124 grain stuff. Uh, like, you know, like NATO spec full metal jacket and stuff like that uh it's quite accurate it's got a 7.74 inch barrel or roughly seven and three quarter inch barrel uh, i can print groups about the size of a fist out to 20 yards pretty easily and uh especially with the optic it's a piece of cake and uh you know almost seven years in on this thing uh i i really didn't like it in the beginning but like i keep saying once you address some of the shortcomings of this gun it's actually pretty awesome uh, for the money, for the money, again, only for the money, this is probably the best option on the market if you consider cost. Yes, it's direct blowback, and yes, there are guns that are hands down superior to this thing. You could make a great argument that the MPX, you know, B&T APC series and, you know, the venerable old MP5s, you could definitely argue that they are better than this gun in ways. However, when you consider cost and when you consider, you know, all the things that this thing can do, especially once you start upgrading it and shit, you know, it, it's, I mean, outside of the fact that it's direct blowback, that's really the only knock that it has against it. I mean, literally, outside of the fact that it recoils a little heavier than stuff like MP5s and MPXs and shit like that, this, this is a great gun. The magazine solution by itself makes it very formidable, especially, again, considering cost, because these mags are everywhere. Uh, they're cheap. You know, unlike, you know, fucking MPXs, I mean, those mags are like 50 bucks a pop, and half the time you can't even find them because they're sold out. And who wants to pay 50 bucks for a mag? I think that's retarded, but that's just me. 
Scorpion mags, on the other hand, you know, they're anywhere from uh, about 15 to 20 bucks, depending on where you look. Uh, you can get them all day long from everywhere. There's a bunch of different brands that make shit for it. And the aftermarket loves this gun, so pretty much any shortcoming that it has can be addressed. Obviously, outside of the fact that it's direct blowback and it kind of recoils kind of heavy, but, you know, it's just something you got to deal with with this gun. Other than that, again, great gun for the money. Uh, if you're looking into sub guns or pistol caliber carbines, uh, this is, you know, it, it's a great option to start, especially if you're just getting into the PCC game. Or if you just want a nine millimeter, damn, nine millimeter lead slinger to have fun with at the range, uh, it absolutely makes a viable home defense carbine or home defense pistol setup. Uh, if you want to run it like that, uh, they suppress very well. Well, which I do plan on adding a suppressor to this thing probably in the next few weeks, uh, and I'll I'll post some follow up videos about that when I start getting into that game. But um, yeah, I mean this gun, great. Uh, I can't really can't really say enough good things about it at least in its current configuration again once you start upgrading it and you kind of get it to where you want it to be it's an absolutely fantastic gun out the box though they kind of suck <laughs> so just keep that in mind definitely uh, address the few shortcomings that it has if you do plan on getting one of these and once you do and once you kind of tailor the gun to your your own you know usage uh, it's great it really is and uh, it's you know I, I think it's I think it's a head turner, honestly, especially in the, all the cool colors that they come in. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you want to talk about this gun uh, or you know, drop some comments in the uh, the video down below, you know, just share your thoughts. It's all good. Uh, other than that, I mean, there's not really too much else I can say about this gun. Again, just summarizing everything. It has some obvious shortcomings out of the box, but once you address those, you can definitely transform it into a great piece and. Uh, at least relative to its competitors on the market, particularly when considering cost, it is probably, or I guess you could say arguably, one of the more sensible options in the uh, PCC game, hands down. Definitely a sensible pickup uh, for a subgun. That's really uh, all I have to say about it, I guess. Uh, again, just drop some comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day.